I got the next in September, took it out of the box, and, uh, and started programming. And it, it, I, I said, new project, and it asked me for the name of the project, and I said, World Wide Web. That was done more or less, uh, I, I got that more or less running with the first uh, web server, and ran the web server actually on my desk on the same machine as the web client. In fact, the first release of the software I did date, I, I, I guess it, must, it was 1991-25, it was Christmas Day. Christmas Day was actually very important for us at that point because my wife and I were expecting our first child on the 24th of December. So when people ask about the details of that, everything I remember was about that event rather than about the World Wide Web, the World Wide Web program I got doing quickly to get it out of the way before the magic, uh, this magic time uh, occurred. People ask, well, when did you, what was the moment when you really realized it was going to take off? And I show them the graph and say, well, when do you say, when would you say, it was, you know, it was, it was a slow bang. It was a big bang, but it was happening over three years. It got to that point that the World Wide Web was some, a word that appeared in the at first the Economist, I think was the first to mention it, and then the press, and eventually the tabloid press. Uh, and then even the chief executives of quite a lot of large companies got to hear about it. So in about 1993, uh, I had to change from pushing to steering. Industry people came to me and said, we are built, basing our whole new corporate strategy around the web. We understand that you've got the specifications about how it works on a disk on your machine somewhere in your office. It's very important to avoid short-term corporate greed in trying to get a short-term return on investment by thinking that you can make a, a small a proprietary market that you can keep all to yourself. Because in fact, what you'll do is you may block the creation of a huge market, which though you won't own it all yourself, it, you will be a much bigger player than you ever would have been in your, in your proprietary market. Nobody would want to go and invest in it. There was a system just like the World Wide Web called Gopher. The Gopher system was developed by two guys at the University of Minnesota. And it was, had a much more dramatic rise on the, on the internet than the World Wide Web. In fact, everybody was very excited about it. And at a certain point, the University of Minnesota said, oh, we may have to charge, if not if you're a university, not if you're non-commercial, uh, not if you're using the client, only if you're a commercial company using a server. Possibly, not definitely, maybe we may charge a very small fee. Finito. It was over. Nobody worked on Gopher. If you are going to have a big open infrastructure that everybody is going to use, if it's going to be the common point of connection, it has to be royalty free. So Pete now the constant question, why, Tim, why don't you just charge people 10 cents a click? 0 0.000001 cents a click, you'd be so rich. OK, the answer is even 0 0.0001 cents a click. It's a proprietary system. The result, hundreds of different proprietary systems charging different amount, but not communicating between each other. And not, no World Wide Web. We wouldn't have the World Wide Web today. I wouldn't be here speaking to you. One of the move, big moves is that whereas before we think of the web as something you look at on a computer, on a laptop, more and more people are using mobile phones and portable things of all different shapes and sizes, all these gadgets that you take out of your pocket and then uh, and wirelessly, when you're on the train, allow you to go on to a website. The number of those devices so far exceeds the number of computers. And they're... Uh, uh, and while that number is constantly growing, also they're becoming much more sophisticated. So they're becoming a very important platform. One of the important and useful things about that, I think, is that they will be cheaper. So in developing countries, they may get to places where computers haven't. So wireless-based connectivity to mobile devices may get to a lot of people that wired connectivity to laptops and desktops didn't. So, as we go into the future, I think that what's coming is going to be some very, very powerful applications. Things that maybe will be so fast that they will have a destabilizing effect. Even now, we're concerned that, for example, the blogs out there, the websites like Slashdot, which are basically rumor mills that will circulate a rumor across the planet in 15 minutes that has no justification at all. Uh, and the, 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 the crazy set of bloggers out there and the very, very, uh, and the very responsible set of bloggers 
and how you distinguish the, the questions of how you distinguish these apart. I think there are lots of questions about how our society develops using these, about the stability, about trust, about how we learn what to trust, which are really important. And like all the whole development of the web, as we found with all each of the developments of the World Wide Web Consortium, these are not technical questions. They're not questions which you, could be solved by writing a, a computer pro program. They're social questions at heart. Originally, the World Wide Web was a social development. I wrote it so that people could work together. I wanted people to have a shared, ge geography-free space in which they could be creative. We're not quite still there, but, I, but we're, we're getting there. But as we make it, it's a social drive. It's drive to make a social system. And the issues which we've come across have largely been social. We're doing, we're creating a new world by inventing new technology and, to a certain extent, inventing new conventions about people, how people interact. And when we invent these little, these microscopic laws of interaction, we see huge things blossom, like the blogosphere, like Wikipedia, like all the exciting things which are happening on the web now. And it's going to be an art and a science to connect these things together. In fact, we're calling that web science. Figuring out how, as you change, invent these new systems, it really affects the world, and the world affects it. It's going to be really, really exciting.